الله بالخير لعل إرث مظالم العبودية غير الإنساني ضد الأفارقة والمنحدرين من أصل أفريقي عابر للتاريخ والجغرافيا هي جرائم ضد الإنسانية بيد أن أومالي يشتلا رئيس حزب الشعب الأفريقي الاشتراكي نجح في جعل مفهوم التعويضات كلمة مألوفة عالميا وركيزة أساسية في النضال الأفريقي تقرير حول التعويضات للمتضررين من العبودية في الأمريكيتين ومنطقة البحر الكاريبي على المحيط الأطلسي هو مستند يحدد بالأرقام التعويضات التي على حكومات جميع القوى الاستعمارية السابقة دفعها بموجب القانون الدولي ما هي حركة التعويضات العالمية؟ من يقود الحركة العالمية لتحرير أفريقيا؟ والشعوب الأفريقية حركة الأهور ما هي ولماذا تلاحق من قبل مكتب التحقيقات الفيدرالي التعويضات لأحفاد المستعبدين مأزق مالي في أمريكا اليوم كيف يوظف في السياسة بين الحزبين الجمهوري والديمقراطي وماذا عن نضال الشعوب الأفريقية والعربية وسواها ضد وحشية الاستعمار والاحتلال نرحب بكم ونرى ونسمع أكثر من أومالي يشتلا المنظر الأفريقي ورئيس المنظمة الأفريقية الاشتراكية الدولية في البعد الأقرب هذه الميادين وأنا زينب صفار خليكم ويانا Omali Yeshitala, chairman of the African People's Socialist Party and the African Socialist International, founder of the theory of African internationalism, leader of the Uhuru movement, and author of An Uneasy Equilibrium, the African Revolution versus Parasitic Capitalism. Chairman Omali Salam, and welcome to Al Mayadeen. This is the proximate aspect, and I'm Zainab Al Safar. Uhuru, such a pleasure Uhuru. to have you, sir. Uhuru, thank you very much. for. I'm, I'm really pleased to be with you on today. Thank you. You're most welcome, sir. Well, as chairman of the African People's Socialist Party and leader of the Uhuru movement, for the majority of your life, you have worked for the liberation of the African uh, people. You spoke all over the world in your quest to build the African Socialist International. You struggled for a united and liberated Africa under the leadership of African uh, workers. What have you realized and deduced while on this long, excruciating journey? Well, one of the things is very clear is that the entire foundation of, uh, of Europe and European civilization, the, uh, the existence of the capitalist social system itself, has its origin in the colonial domination of the world economy that was created, as Marx said, by turning Africa into a warren for the commercial hunting of black skins, uh, for the assault that was made uh, <clears throat> on what he characterized as East India Indian, where at least 50 million people were killed by the British, and uh, what has occurred within uh, this place that we refer to as the Americas. It, this is the origin of a political economy that dominates and oppresses the world. And many people have forgotten uh, that what we characterize as the United States is a settler colony in the same way uh, the illegitimate white nationalist state of Israel is a settler colony. And the same thing can be said about Australia and, 
and other things like that. So African people exist in a state of colonial domination. Mm -hmm. uh, the fact is that majority of the world and the entire world is locked into a colonial mode of production. It is mm -hmm. a parasitic kind of world economy. Uh, you succeeded, actually, uh, Chairman Amali, in making uh, reparations a household word with the establishment of the International Tribunal of Reparations for Black People in the U.S., which was first held in New York uh, back in 1982. Hearings of the tribunal which determined that the U.S. owes African people in the U.S. 4.1 trillion U.S. dollars in reparations for stolen labor alone. Yet the picture today is even grimmer. Is the black community facing an ongoing genocide in the U.S. of A today? Is demanding reparations an anti-capitalist liberation practice, sir? It, it is, ultimately. Uh, many of the people who have been brought onto the reparations project uh, did uh, so for a variety of reasons. For the African People's Socialist Party, mm -hmm. uh, the reparations demand is the function of the revolution. That is to say, of African people being able to seize uh, control over our own lives, to be able to determine our own future. And within the United States, we work uh, to become a self-governing people uh, as a part of a total struggle uh, to liberate all of Africa. But we believe that uh, it's really important to have brought everybody into this discussion, because when we first began the reparations work, uh, much of our community was on, was suffering from a defensive posture uh, that the colonizers uh, in, inside the United States, and I think this happens in Europe as well, mm -hmm. uh, had uh, created a narrative that suggests that Black people uh, African people lived uh, under on, on, at the some kind of uh, welfare of white people of the colonizer, and the reparations demand uh, gave us an opportunity to expand an understanding throughout the African community and with other peoples that the 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 it's not African people who have lived off the welfare of white people or the colonizer. It's the other it's way the around. Yes. The other way around. Sure. Yeah. Uh, of course, the harm caused by the transatlantic chattel. Uh, slavery is vast and its repercussions deeply tormenting. Uh, in the report on reparations for transatlantic chattel slavery in the Americas and the Caribbean, the team of experts and economists quantified certain elements of reparations to be between uh, 100 and 131 trillion US dollars. Noteworthy that the harms during the period of enslavement were inflicted on 19 uh, million, around 19 million people over four centuries, including, of course, Africans, those who were kidnapped and transported to the Americas and Caribbean, and those born into uh, slavery. Well, that's extremely appalling, sir. What do true reparations to the African people mean? Well, first of all, I think it's really important to recognize that the reason we are demanding reparations in the United States is because of an attack on Africa. It's not like black people in the Caribbean or in South America or in the United States just happen to pop up here uh, mm -hmm. looking uh, to play basketball. We were kidnapped. So when we look at what has happened, uh, when we talk about reparations here, what has that cost Africa? What has been the cost to Africa of the assault on Africa, the neo-colonial regimes that rest there, uh, uh, carrying out the will of the colonizer? What has it cost? What, how much labor have we uh, utilized, expended in Brazil and mm -hmm. in North America and other places that would have gone to the development uh, in Africa if it had not occurred? So the but, reparations... But sir, I, I mean, sir, sorry to interrupt you, but I mean, 19 million people all kidnapped. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the figures, the, those are relatively uh, recently uh, low figures. I mean, going back to people like W.E.B. Du Bois, one of the most noted historians, 
uh, from the African world has come up with figures of as high as 100 million. And other historians have done that in the past, African historians. So, but 19 million, that's a grotesque number of people. That's larger than some countries. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 and and there, but there are more Africans in prison in the United States than there are people in some countries. So uh, that's the that's the conditions that we suffer from, and that's one of the basis, part of the basis for the demand for reparations. Uh, might you just tell us what is the global reparations movement uh, uh, about? Uh, what's the way forward in this sense, and how to get more involved in the struggle for reparations to the African people? One of the things that uh, we have done is we are building uh, 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 the African People's Socialist Party and the Uhuru movement in various places. We are, we are actually engaged uh, in, in political work in the townships in South Africa. Uh, we are even in the Bahamas, in Trinidad, in Bermuda, and, and places like that, uh, and, and throughout the United States and Europe. We have, in the United States, for example, we have created the African People's Solidarity Committee, which is an organization of white people. Mm -hmm. uh, it exists in something like 141 cities in the United States, and mm -hmm. it has been uh, responsible for taking the reparations demand into the colony, into the white communities, rather, among the colonizers. We have collected uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars for reparations to payment that goes to economic development projects and programs. Education, which is one of the economic development, yes. Economic development, education, uh, and also recreation. I mean, uh, you know what it is, uh, live in a colonial situation and, and you know, just children wanting to play, uh, having to find a safe space to, to play. That's a really important part of the work that we have to take on as well. So. Uh, recreational projects, basketball uh, courts and things like that, where children don't have to play in the streets. Mm -hmm. uh, we've created those, and we've created that in part uh, through uh, reparations that have been voluntarily given uh, to the African people through our party, through the Uhuru movement, uh, uh, and uh, by colonizers, by the settlers themselves. And that, in, in, in fact, is one of the problems we think that the United States government has is that we've fractured the absolute unity uh, that white people or the colonizers have had with the colonial state itself. Right. Uh, in the sense, sir, well, um, democratic officials had for years nodded approvingly at the idea of uh, reparations, uh, a position that appealed to many black voters uh, who are the party's most loyal constituency. That's a fact. President Biden, as presidential candidate in uh, 2020, endorsed a federal study of reparations, appointed experts, uh, but have expended little political capital to advance the project in the White House. How do you read this? Are reparations a financial quandary or a political one in the U.S. for both parties? I think it's a, a quandary for both parties, both uh, economic and, and uh, political. I mm -hmm. think that uh, the thing for Biden is, as you mentioned, uh, he relies on the base of African people. African people constitute something like 25 percent of the base of the Democratic Party. Uh, in fact, uh, without the participation of African people, there's not a Democratic uh, president who could be elected. It's African people who have made the difference in every instance. Mm -hmm. So Biden has to at least uh, pretend to support this. But during the presidential election, when, when Biden was first running and the question of reparations came up, Biden has said that he was opposed to reparations. I want to be clear on that. He's, he's come out and said he's opposed to reparations. So now, after more than 40 years, the Congress uh, uh, or the House of Representatives in the U.S. Congress have said that they are willing to, and, uh, to put forth a study on the, whether reparations are due to African people. And so that's an easy thing for him to do. Biden can get down on one knee. He can say Black Lives Matter because it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't project uh, any uh, thing that will change the political and economic uh, power relations between African people and the colonizers themselves. So Biden is doing this uh, in order to project his own interests and the interests of a certain sector of the ruling class that needs Black people to vote for them. So mm -hmm. he doesn't, he can do all kinds of symbolic things, but they will never take a political position. And also Biden has attacked his government. His government has attacked the African People's Socialist Party. I'm facing criminal charges. I'm facing, I have been indicted by the United States government uh, for doing things like putting reparations on the ballot 
which is supposed to be legal in the United States. Uh, exactly. Because, uh, yeah, and because it's claimed that uh, we, we're doing this because the Russians uh, somehow uh, wanted this done, that we're working for Russia when we put forth a reparation. So and on the one hand, Biden says, mm -hmm. he says, we can have a study. On mm -hmm. the other hand, what Biden does is attack an actual um, movement by black people to achieve uh, uh, some meaningful uh, reparations so, response. So as long as this very uh, attractive title serves the presidential campaigns, we use it and then afterwards we just put it on the rack. Well, in the 1960s, black revolution swept the U.S. and the African world. Today, after and despite many ebbs and flows um, in your perspective, sir, how can we liberate and unite Africa? And how can the African people become a powerful moving force? Is African internationalism a way to define the historical development of Africans in history? I think the African internationalism is a way to define the, the historical development of a world economy, a whole world social system that's got us all locked into it that the, 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 the whole world system is defined by this colonial relationship, whether it's in the Middle East. I mean, we remember how the borders in the Middle East that's being contested today were created uh, by the French and the British uh, in particular, but it's maintained by the Sykes colonial Pico, powers. yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. Sykes-Pico. And mm -hmm. so the, the fact is that whether it's there, whether it's throughout the Americas, we, I live uh, in the United States, where uh, uh, the indigenous population live in concentration camps that they call Indian reservations, uh, mm -hmm. and where half of Mexico was stolen at gunpoint as recently as 1848. And the Mexican people uh, suffer uh, uh, as a consequence of that as illegal aliens on their own land. Mm -hmm. This is the America that we are talking about, and this is the thing that's mobilized African people, the reason I'm in motion, and this is why when we define the contradiction correctly, they would have us talk about fighting against racism, which is the ideas in the heads of the settlers. We say we have to fight for power. Mm -hmm. uh, Africans, the colonized people here and around the world have to be about uh, taking back our power from the colonizer and, and extracting ourselves from a, a colonial mode of production. The, the fact is that the political and economic configuration of the world has already uh, begun to change. It's exactly. In a state of great transition. With, great the advance, transition. with the advance of multipolarity, of course, and a more multipolar uh, world. Well, uh, as you said, sir, the U.S. government has a decades-long uh, legacy of waging war on the African liberation uh, movement. Scores of black leaders and organizations uh, have been targeted by the FBI many of them with an accusation of friendship with Russia, as you said uh, previously, including Martin Luther King Jr. Recently, also, a federal grand jury charged you and two other leaders of the Uhuru movement of working with the Russian government within the United States. What's all this about? Is this the Where price... Yes, is this the price you have to pay for opposing another NATO war, supporting reparations for black people and protesting against uh, racism, colonialism and capitalism? This is, this is a, a price that we have to pay. And I would remind everybody that uh, this is not a new phenomenon of the United States. The United States itself is a, is a creature of colonial terror against the indigenous peoples uh, within these current borders. I mean, America is a name that was imposed on this land uh, by foreigners and aliens who took the land, murdered people, and, and uh, almost exterminated them, and then brought Africans here as captives. Uh, people like to refer to the United States often as some kind of uh, uh, nation of immigrants, but that's a mischaracterization because the United States, first of all, is not a nation, it's a prison of nations. And secondly, Africans are immigrants here, nor are the indigenous people immigrants here. Mm -hmm. So we came here in chains as captives. You can't, you don't even see indigenous people in the streets of this country. They're in concentration camps. That's the reality that nobody speaks about. That's very true. Well, some world leaders, like Portugal's president, uh, said this country should apologize and take responsibility for its role in the transatlantic slave trade. Uh, also, uh, the British Labour MP Clive Lewis has called on Prime Minister Sunak to enter negotiations with Caribbean leaders on paying reparations for Britain's role in slavery. Dutch King apologizes also for Netherlands' historic role in slavery. 
And yet, some people today might argue whether reparations were the best way forward. What do you say, sir? I say that reparations is one of the ways forward. Mm -hmm. That uh, the fact is that African people, we have to recognize the agency of African people that we have to take power and control over our own lives. We have to negate colonialism. We negate colonialism with freedom, with liberation, with free speech, with the ability to organize in the communities here and around the world so that people begin to recapture our resources. That's why the United States is attacking Venezuela. That's why the United States is in Afghanistan. That's why the United States is killing people in Syria. That's why the United States is active. Iraq, along sure. Korea, Iraq, and the Ill illegitimate uh, uh, white nationalist state of Israel. Mm -hmm. uh, all around the world, you have this process of maintaining this colonial pedestal upon which the economy of the entire white world rests. It cannot, can you imagine? A, sure. a, a capitalism that didn't ha have the advantage of having stolen the indigenous lands here. And mm. when I say here, I don't mean just what they call the United States. I'm talking about the Americas, the totality of the Americas. Couldn't be such a capitalism. It rests upon the foundation of the colonial enslavement of Africans and other peoples around the world. And that's why collectively what the people have to do is fight uh, for our liberation. African people have agency. Some people do not recognize that, but we do as a political party, and we engage in the struggle to take power, and we call on everybody to be able to unite with us in that effort, and part of that is fighting back against these ridiculous charges. You must take the story out about what the United States government is doing to us in terms of these charges uh, that, that, that they supposedly, mm -hmm. uh, 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 they, that violates their own constitution, as they put it forward. Right. But and we see that happening all the time, so. Sure. In a similar vein, in the wake of the recent Israeli occupation, heinous aggression against uh, Jenin and uh, the Jenin refugee camp, of course, the largest military operation against Jenin in two decades. Uh, we would appreciate your views on the Palestinian ongoing struggle against the Israeli occupation. And the world is watching with utter silence this I'm human... Sure, this human slaughter, of course. Does this signify the onset of a third Palestinian intifada, a new chapter in the Palestinian struggle for liberation, sir? I think it does, and I think that increasingly uh, it, it uh, uh, offers uh, all of us an opportunity uh, to extend the most profound solidarity with Palestine and the Palestinians. We say, free, free Palestine, long live Palestine. And when we talk about Palestine, we talk about all of it, not just that which has been recognized by the Israeli state. If we say occupied Palestine, we're talking about everything that they characterize as Israel. It's Palestine. It's something that was taken by gun, uh, at, with gunpoint with the collaboration of all of the colonial powers. They took that land, took that territory. Uh, they killed people, bombed mosques, uh, murdered people. We're looking at Janine now, but that's the history of the relationship because that's what is necessary. You cannot keep a people colonized without an ongoing process of ubiquitous violence has to be imposed against the people. And, and, and the U.S. and others colonizers have succeeded. Uh, and shutting up, quieting all the peoples who should be on the side and working hand in glove with the Palestinian struggle, watching this murder happening on a regular basis uh, without any meaningful kind of outcry. We have to be, and in, in, we extend our hand to the Palestinian people, and we have worked with Palestinians for many, 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 many years, and will continue to do so uh, because we recognize that it's not just Palestine, it's, uh, it's against, it's uh, something that works against all of oppressed peoples and, and quite as it kept against the working peoples of the world. Right. Chairman Omali Yeshitala, Chairman of the African People's Socialist Party, thank you very much, sir, for talking to us and for enlightening us. Always a pleasure to have you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I want to thank uh, all of your viewers and listeners uh, for being with us and Free, free Palestine, uh, uh, long live Palestine, uh, freedom to all the oppressed and colonized peoples of the world, freedom to the toiling masses who produce all the wealth uh, for these rulers who dominate us with guns and bombs and displacement, etc. Uh, the fact of the matter is that what we see happening now is a desperate imperialism and they are moving because we are becoming better organized and people are becoming more demanding and we are winning. Thank you so much. Uhuru. 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 Thank you very much, sir. Uhuru.
إذا منذ أن تم إلغاء العبودية في منطقة البحر الكاريبي في ثلاثينيات القرن التاسع عشر وفي الأمريكيتين الأوسع في ستينيات وثمانينيات القرن نفسه كان ضحايا العبودية وذريتهم يكافحون من أجل العدالة لإصلاح الأضرار التي سببتها هذه الجرائم الأكثر فظاعة ضد الإنسانية لطالما كان هذا النضال ثابتا في مطالب التعويضات والتعويض عن جرائم العبودية في الغرب حيث باتت التعويضات جزءا لا يتجزأ من حركات التحرير الأخرى على مر السنين مثل الحركات المناهضة للاستعمار والمناهضة للإمبريالية وحركة الوحدة الأفريقية والحقوق المدنية وحقوق الإنسان في منطقة البحر الكاريبي وأمريكا الشمالية وأمريكا اللاتينية لعل اليوم يمثل فرصة لأحفاد المستعبدين والمستعبدين للتفكير في أسباب هذه الجرائم القبيحة ضد الإنسانية وتداعياتها لربما تم القضاء على العبودية على صفحات القانون ولكن هل تم فعلا؟ إلغاء مفهوم العبودية في الممارسات المتطرفة للمتعصبين للبيض ووقف اعتداءاتهم اليومية الهمجية ضد المنحدرين من أصول أفريقية وعدم إفلاتهم من العقاب من كل الميادين سلاما وتحية في مالك